Hello friends, so today we're going to discuss all the four problems from the ad coder beginner contest 105. Lately I've been solving or uh, sorry up solving ad coder problems because they are very informative and also for beginners and also for intermediate persons like uh, solving these types of problems is very helpful. So I'm up solving these contests and I will be regularly posting all of these contest videos. Also, I have made playlist on binary search and backtracking and I will be also uploading problems on some other playlists. So stay tuned on my channel. So let's start the first four problems in this contest. So the problem is the first problem is add coder cracker. So this problem like uh, seems very easy, but you first read this problem and then try to draw it out. So Takahashi has decided to distribute n add coder crackers to k users like as evenly as possible so they are k persons and you have n toffees you can assume now what is the minimum possible absolute difference between the largest number of crackers received by a user and the smallest number received by a user so that's the whole question so you can assume that you are five people so you have five people now if you are now if you have three sticks or like three candies you can distribute to this like this and uh, some are zero so that difference between them is the maximum candy anyone get is one and the minimum is zero so the uh, difference is one okay now let's assume you have four candies so you distribute like this because if you give this person two then the difference between two minus zero the minimum and the maximum is two which is greater so it's beneficial to distribute first everyone one so now also the like the difference between the maximum and the minimum is one one only now if you have five candies you distribute like this and then everyone get evenly one toffee and the difference between them is zero now if you have again one more candy which is six candy you will again give this first person one more candy so it, now this person has two candy and everyone has one candy so again the difference between one so as you can see you can simply observe from this question is if only and if uh, the total number of candies are divisible by the total number of person then the then the difference between or the absolute difference is zero because everyone will get a evenly amount of toffees else the answer is one because then only there is always one person which has some less number of toffee and other person has equal and thus the difference between them is one so that's the logic for this problem uh, if n modulus k which is evenly distributed the answer is zero else the answer is one okay second question is uh, cakes and donuts so now uh, la confucius abc sells cakes at four dollars and each donut at seven dollars each. so there are two dishes or you can assume two items for the cake for four dollars and the donuts for seven dollars each determine if there is a way to buy some of them at exactly n dollars so you have to find out that there is some way that you buy some donuts and some cakes such that the total amount equals to n so because n is very small you can like do a brute force over like you can assume that i buy one donuts and zero uh, like zero cakes then one donut and two cakes three cakes and so on and then you have to just check out that whether the total sum equals to this n if it equals to it, any case the answer is yes i can buy n equal to this as you can see if i buy one cake and one donut the total is 11 so this is a valid configuration but 40 is not a valid configuration so or, or 40 you can also do because you can buy 10 donuts uh, but in this uh, yeah uh, sorry 10 cakes but in this three is not a valid answer so that's the whole problem you can just do a brute force i'll take out to the code part now so what i've done here is sorry this is the code yeah so i'll just do a i is the value for number of cakes and j number for donuts so it's just doing for till 100 you can also do it like till 50 also it's also fine so then uh, the totals uh, total value for if i bought i like donuts sorry i cakes and j donuts then the total submission is 4 into i plus 7 into j and if at some point it becomes equal to n which is the total n i'm inputted then the answer is yes and just return out at this point because at this point we just got an answer else if we don't hit at this condition the answer is no okay the next question is base to number base minus two number sorry so you are given an integer n and you have to find out the base minus two representation of that number what base minus two representation means that uh, maybe you know the binary representation if you have some number how to represent it binary representation same if you have some number you have to represent it minus two representation as you can see if you have number minus nine how you can represent it's minus two to the power zero minus one to the power one minus two to the power three and so on 
and if you do a summation of them the answer is minus 10 so as you can see the total number is this this is the representation which is the uh, minus 2 representation uh, base of minus 10 so how you can do this if you just know how to find out the binary representation with 2 then this problem just seems very intuitive so i'll tell you how this problem uh, may be asked in a lot of uh, like coding problems also so how to find out the like base number with the minus 3 or minus 5 whatever so what you can do in this is how to find out for minus 2 or oh, sorry 2 yeah, if you have some number 9 so uh, if you find it for 2 then what will you you'll keep on dividing it by 2 and uh, write down the remainders here so if you have 9 then you divide it by uh, 2 so it becomes 4 remainder is 1 then you have again 2 divided by 2 so number is 2 so it's mean that you have divide 4 divided by 2 then the, the divisor is 2 and the remainder is 0 divisor is 2 and dividend yeah and then uh, you, if you have the next number which is again 2 divided by 2 again and then uh, as you can see the number is 1 and this is 0 so the, the representation for 9 is 1 0 0 1 but now can can I do the same for minus 2 yeah let's assume I have minus 2 now keep on dividing in minus 9 with minus 2 such that I can reach 1 in the end so how I can divide minus 2 so see if I divide 9 divided by 2 how I can divide uh, or I can represent this number see if uh, I just divide 9 divided by 2 just without sign the answer is 4 and also if I divide 9 divided by minus 2 then the sign will change obviously because if I divide 9 divided by minus 2 then this is positive this is negative so the answer will be negative 4 okay and then okay just now if I write minus 4 now just find out the remainder so as you can see if this is minus 4 multiply minus 2 with minus 4 which is minus which is 8 so if you if you write down 8 then you can assume that this is a smaller number than 9 which means that this is not correct I have to write minus 5 here if I write minus 5 here then minus 2 into minus 4 minus 10 plus 1 I hope you get the point this is just that I am dividing 9 divided by minus 2 if I divide 9 divided by minus 2 it is equal to so as you can see I can write down 9 as minus 2 into 5 plus 1 so this is the remainder and this is the this is the actually the factor which is 5 so this is the total sum which is 9 so that's what I've done because I have to write 9 in terms of minus 2 and then what is the factor which is like minus 5 and what is the remainder which is 1 okay so because uh, I, I divided okay this is minus 5 yeah this is minus 5 because uh, this is both minus minus then only if you multiply minus 5 into minus 2 uh, plus 1 it is equal to 9 so it becomes minus 5 so now that's how you understand that if it is 2 then it will be 4 but now it is minus 5 okay now I again divide by minus 2 if I again divide by minus 2 if I do minus 5 divided by minus 2 the, the sign will get cancelled out it's just 5 divided by 2 which is just like uh, if it's 5 divided by 2 then it's just like like 2 1 so it means that uh, the, the remainder is the remainder is 1 and this is the factor now I begin to divide by 2 so which is minus 2 so what what will happen it will be minus 1 and it will be 0 okay okay let's see what is the number uh, this is this is minus 9 okay can we do this with minus 9 okay if I do this with minus 9 then it will be plus 5 because uh, plus 5 which is minus 10 plus 1 which is equal to uh, so if it is minus minus 2 into plus 5 so minus 10 plus 1 which is 9 okay cool so it is so it is 5 plus 5 then minus 2 divided by 5 so it is 2 and 1 so it is minus 2 plus 1 okay fine then if you again do this then it will turn out to be 1 okay so then the fact so as you can see this turn out to be 1 in the end and when it turn out to be 1 we just have to stop and when it is stop what is the total numbers you have to find out what is the binary like representation it is 1 0 1 1 and that's the number as you can see 1 0 1 
so now how you can write this down how you can do this you just have to do iteratively like what i've done how to find out the binary representation for uh, two then you just have to do the same i have done in just do a uh, like a while loop uh, till you get one and you have to do this iteration till every point so i'll take out the code part now so i'll tell you how i'm going to do, the, to do this video or to this code so if n is equal to zero then the answer is zero else you have to store this in some so i have taken an empty string so while n is not equal to one because in the end n equal to one then only we stop till then whenever the n is not equal to one we don't have to stop so i have two cases if n is positive n means the number itself this number which on which i am current number i am if this number is positive or it, if it is negative if it is negative then both numbers are negative as you can see this is minus two and this is minus two then I'll cancel out so it's just that you just have to divide them and the, keep the remainder here uh, if it is positive as you can see if it is greater than zero you just have to do this because it is positive it is just k is equal to n mod 2 find out what is the modulus means what is the remainder so store that remainder in, in the string and then the next is because as you can see because sorry this is the positive number the next will be negative so because if it is positive it's just 5 divided by 2 okay so the and then you have to put a negative sign you just have to physically see what are the values coming here and then you just have to put that thing and then the for the else part also what you can do uh, because uh, the negative the because if it is negative you have to first convert it into positive then only we can divide so i have to like convert it into absolute value and then find the remainder and then uh, append the remainder in the string s and then what you can do you can find out the next n which is first make is absolute if it is like odd then just n divided by 2 plus 1 because as you can see if it is odd if uh, as you can see if i divide 9 divided by 2 it is equal to 4 but it is not equal to 4 it's equal to 5 so i have to add 1 to it okay else uh, if it is even you just have to do n divided by 2 and in the end because uh, one is also left i have to append one to it in the end because in the end we stop at one but i have to also append this in the string s and because this string is formed in this manner what i have to print in this manner so i have to reverse it out and this you just it, reverse it out and this print out that string. and that's the logic for the third problem the fourth problem is a very standard problem if you know this i'll understand i'll like, make you understand it in a very simple manner in which you are given n boxes arranged in a row from left to right and the ith box uh, from the left contains ai candies so as you can see this is the number of candies in each box and now you have to take out the candies from some consecutive boxes and distribute them evenly to m children so okay now you can take out some candies in consecutive boxes and then distribute to m children now as you can see find a number of pairs of l to r they satisfy the following condition and when both l to r is within the bound of this whole boxes and then the summation of all the boxes between l to r is a multiple of m what does this mean it means that if you take out a summation of some values let's say that uh, these are the possible values you can just take out the box one these two boxes these three boxes the second box second and third and only third this is the total summation of the candies and if the total summation of candies is a multiple of m which is 2 you have to find out the answers like how many l to r exist so this is multiple of 2 this is 2 multiple of 2 this is 2 so answer is 3 so now uh, this though this problem seems very difficult but uh, you just have to understand one key logic in this problem so i'll take it on to the code part now so uh, my, the main logic to understand in this problem is let's assume that i have some number which is like 9 3 5 let's do that a very large number now what you can do if you do a summation from left to right this is 9 now summation of these integers which is 9 then 9 plus 3 which is 12 12 plus 5 17 and so on okay or if you have some positive and negative numbers or okay this is uh, very a crude example but let's assume that i have some number which is 2 then 3 then minus 2 then minus 3 okay let's assume that i have some sum value which is initially equal to 0 and initially when i'm from the left part the total summation till now is 0 because i have no sum no numbers 
Now if I move from left to right, the total summation till that point is, as you can see, this is two, this is five, this is again minus two, so the total summation till now it becomes three. And now after adding this number, it becomes zero. So now as you can easily understand that the initial sum was zero and the final sum was also zero, this sum is zero. So what does this mean? It means that because I have seen this number again, it means that the the number in between is not doing anything. Doing anything means that because these numbers eventually lead to the same sum, which means that if I take only these numbers, okay, or see as you can see, if I take all these numbers, because uh, it's from zero to this, if I take all these numbers, the total summation will be zero or because they are not doing anything. They're not adding anything because if they are adding, then the total summation will not come out to be this value. If the total summation come out to be the same value at some other point, maybe it come out to be three again at this point, which means that if this is three and this is three, which means that both till this point, both the arrays till this point, this number comes again and thus the number in between is not doing anything. It means that the total summation between these numbers is equal to zero. And same, you can extend this logic to multiples. So because if you see the same number again, uh, whenever you are iterating from left to right, you keep the sum of those numbers. And if you keep the sum of these numbers, just do a mod of those numbers with M. Because if you do a mod of these numbers, which means that the total summation from left to right, because you have to assume that the total summation from left to right is, let's assume that it is nine, then 12, then 17. If you do this mod with two, Okay, then the mod value for this value for two, uh, it is equal to one, then it is zero, then it is one. So it once a uh, one uh, like come again. So which, me which means that if you take all of these three numbers, it is a multiple of two. Why? So you can also, uh, this is a multiple of two because, uh, so bec uh, this happens because uh, the numbers in between is not doing anything. The number in between is not doing anything. So that's that's how like you can take out these numbers because the summation is multiple of two. And thus you can extend this logic to do the same in this problem. I'll take to the code part now to even make it more clear. Uh, so as you can see in this example, this is n and m, take the number of n and m and make a map to find out whether the same number occurs again or not. And uh, let's assume that I have some number, the total summation till now, uh, the total factor till now become three, let's assume. After some time it becomes three again, after some time it becomes three again and three again. So it means that the total numbers in between these numbers is not doing anything. Between these two is not doing anything. Between these two is not doing anything. And also you can say that between these two are not doing anything or between these two. So you have to keep count of the numbers till now. How many numbers you have seen till now? Because it's in that I have seen till now, uh, like I have seen three till now, three times three now. So I can see that, okay, these three, as you can see, these three uh, like arrays are not contributing anything and they are a multiple of them. And thus you can keep on adding the multiple of M's. You have to keep on, you have to keep track of how many times you have seen a number before. So that you can add, if you again see this number again, you can keep track of that number and you can add this number. This uh, logic seems very difficult to understand at first, but if you do two, three problems, it will become more intuitive. So as you can see, uh, that's what I've done. This is the total and this is summation. Total, store the total number of L to R and sum is the total summation till now. Move from left to right. This is X, this is, you have to find out uh, multiple of uh, m. So what you can do, you have to find out the total sum added with x because you have to add a total sum till now. So it's just like sum plus equal to x. But I have to do a mod with it, mod mod. M. Okay. Now you have to do a total of how many times you have seen this particular sum again. So which is stored in m. So total plus equal to map of sum. And then what you can do, you have to also add this value because I've seen this now value this time. So I have to add this into map also. So I have to add like increment discount of sum in the map. Also, one more thing happens that I am not taking account of the single number or the single sum because in this, uh, we are assuming that this is three. I have again seen this three again here. Okay, so then only this number is not contributing. But what about this three alone? If this is zero, 
then this is zero at this point okay the sum becomes zero at this point and thus as you can see in the problem also you can also do a, a l2r pair equal to length one length one four is equal to fine also so you have to also keep an account that this is not accounting in the logic we are using because uh, in the logic we have to find out that whether there is some same number occurred before but we are taking the same number as a occurrence and thus you have to also keep track of that the total submission become mod equal to m then we have to again increment the total and that's the whole uh, answer for this logic i hope you understand all the four problems if you still have not mentioned down and i'll be posting a lot of videos so stay tuned i'll see you in the next one keep coding bye